Hello everyone and on this gloomy typical Bangalore weather day I welcome you back to our channel The Blank Ticket Now today we are not travelling anywhere uh, we are simply going to talk about the Jeep Compass Now it's been 6 months that we have been driving Jeep Compass and we have completed 12,000 kilometers on it um, Of course 7,500 kilometers were completed in our Ladakh ride but other than that we have driven on very smooth national highways we have driven it on ghat sections we have driven in our good roads bad roads some no roads at all but it has been an excellent experience and we just thought we'll share the experiences with you now in this video we're going to talk about um, some of the good things some of the not so good things i'll not say bad things but not so good things about jeep compass and of course this is going to be our long term review <clears throat> now a few years ago when vitara brezza was launched i absolutely loved the car we actually went to a maruti showroom near our house and took a test drive and one thing that i particularly liked was the very suv type stance and a very boxy structure uh but back then we couldn't afford it so we didn't buy it um uh, and then in 2017 the jeep compass was launched um and that was the time when i basically decided that this is the car for me <laughs> and then in 2021 they launched a facelift edition and i absolutely fell in love with the car so now talking about the build quality um the build quality is absolutely amazing uh, from the third of the doors to the third of the bonnet it sounds very solid uh it has a very butchy very masculine exterior the squared wheel arches and the 18 inch alloy wheels look very proportional to the overall size of the car um all four disc brakes do help with the braking performance we did test it in ladakh on a few occasions when we had to go for panic braking uh brakes helped us a lot and obviously all four disc brakes are um good in that case as well now one thing that i particularly like about the car is the body paint is the paint job that was done on the car now this is not a typical blue uh, that you see on any on any car this is kind of a sparkly blue obviously you'll not see it in this weather but on a bright sunny day the paint job looks absolutely amazing now i'm not sure if this is the case with other colors as well uh, apart from blue i also liked uh, the military green color black is always my favorite but uh the treatment that they have given with this metallic blue is really uh, awesome now the variant that we have is model s which is uh the top variant of in 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 the lineup of jeep compass now the uh typical seven slot grill finished in gray uh matte gray and the jeep badging which is also finished in gray is in line with the overall black theme of the car Now the ORVMs and the roof was also in uh gray color and matte gray color but I actually got it changed to black uh we'll talk about that later Now one thing that I particularly like in Jeep Compass is their design philosophy Now if you compare the original version the original Jeep Compass that was launched in 2020 uh, 2017 and the facelift version that was launched in 2021 there are no uh, the changes are very subtle uh, there are no major changes externally um, the overall design overall dimensions are same they have the same characteristics that the original car had what that does to a average user is that it gives you confidence that a new generation of jeep will not be drastically different from this car um that doesn't make me a owner of a 30 lakh rupees car which belongs to the older generation so this car ages very well um for example if you compare the new generation and the old generation creta uh the car is worlds apart i mean you cannot even tell that these two are the same car um that actually works in favor of some people uh, because that gives them kind of exclusivity but um overall i think if cars have a similar design theme or a uh, or a similar design philosophy over various generations i think that uh, that helps the car age much better uh what also is good about this is the newly launched jeep meridian which was launched in 2022 also has a very similar external face it has a similar seven slot grille although the grille is a little uh, narrow the headlights are also a little sleek it looks kind of better than jeep compass 
but I'm not a big fan of uh, seven seaters. But yeah, I mean, the point is that the design theme is still maintained by Jeep. There are some EVs uh, that Jeep has launched in international markets as well. And that also carries the same design philosophy. Now, getting inside, this is where the Jeep Compass shines. The 2021 facelift version redid their interiors and these interiors are world class. They are absolutely top class and they basically set this model of Jeep Compass apart from the competition. Although I'm not a big fan of all black interiors, I think a dual tone interior on Model S would have looked absolutely top class. But I mean, it is what it is. Uh, if you want to go for Model S and if you were to go for 4x4 uh, diesel, then this is the only option that you get. Now it has soft touch materials all over the dash. The steering wheel feels heavy and is very nice to hold with a proper leather covering. It has both tilt and telescopic steering adjustments. It has a very smartly designed button for instrument cluster navigation on the left and cruise control buttons on the right. Now one thing that is very cleverly done by Jeep is utilizing the space behind the steering. Uh, on the right you have volume controls and on the left you have track controls. Now coming to the infotainment system, the 10.1 inch Uconnect system is very responsive, the UI is very intuitive and has a host of features. Obviously it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay wireless. You have various driver profiles where you can save your own settings. The 9 speaker audio system is awesome and you do get an option to balance fade your audio in any direction. So like if you want to talk in the front seat and rear seat passengers are not that interested in the conversation, you can pretty much move the audio in the rear. Let me show you an example. This is going to be pretty cool. Now the AC vents are actually very elegantly and tastefully done and it integrates very well with the dashboard and the overall uh, design theme in the interiors. The dedicated HVAC controls are good and eliminate the need of navigating through it uh, through the infotainment system. Uh, it has dual zone climate control and we use it actually quite often. The pass side is always a few degrees higher than mine. Now the seats themselves are very comfortable. They are proper leather seats with good under thigh support. Uh, it is 8-way power adjustable and the good thing is both the driver and the co-passenger get the 8-way adjustable seats. Um, you have good lumbar support as well. Uh, the seat themselves are ventilated. However, there are no, there are no dedicated buttons for, uh, for it. But you do get uh, pretty quick shortcut menus on the top left and right corners of the infotainment system. Alright, so let's start driving. Before we do that, did I mention about sunroof? It's awesome. <laughs> Especially on these kind of weather, when you don't have harsh sun glaring down on you, or when it is raining, or when you are in ghat section, this gives you an awesome feel to drive. <laughs> Alright, so let's now talk about what's underneath the hood. So uh, the variant that we have is Model S Diesel variant is powered by a 170 horsepower engine a 2 liter multi-jet diesel engine generating 350 newton meter of torque and which is delivered in the range of 1750 to 2500 rpm now this does not feel underpowered either in city traffic or when you are uh, sailing on smooth highways uh, but if you are an enthusiast i would recommend manual option um, we did not go for manual because as you know our goal was to travel long distances and manual just has that little bit of fatigue factor when you are traveling long distances. So that's why we chose automatic. If you want to have a quick overtake, the 9 speed automatic gearbox does lag a little bit initially but in low RPM speed, at low RPM high speeds the gearbox is extremely smooth. You do not feel gear shifts at all. Um, up shifts and down shifts are very smooth. On ghat section, it rightfully um, holds a particular gear 
although in some of the guard sections i did feel the need to uh, put it in manual but in manual it does not offer a lot of control so which is why i say if you are an enthusiast uh, go for manual and not automatic <clears throat> but other than that i think for our use case we did not find any issues in uh, the gearbox all right so the suspension does feel a little stiff and if there are very sharp bumps on the road you do feel those inside the cabin but those are pretty much limited to very very sharp bumps uh, we did encounter some of those bumps in ladakh and but in general the independent suspension and the frequency damping uh, feature that it has on the suspensions give you a very smooth ride uh, on normal bad patches of the road the vehicle just sails through you do not feel those bumps in the cabin and because of this suspension setup the body roll is also very minimal so that is one good thing about uh, about jeep compass now one of the main factors that we went for this car and one of the main factors why i love this car um, is its go anywhere capabilities which is the basically 4x4 capabilities um although technically you can argue that it's not really required in ladakh uh, you see a lot of vehicles in ladakh which are not 4x4 like innova uh, zylo but those are actually rear wheel drives and on that terrain i think rear wheel drive really helps you a lot and of course one of the important factors is the drivers who actually drive that car are locals so they know the terrain they know how much they can push the vehicles there were few occasions in uh, ladakh where we unfortunately lost our way um, we ended up in lot of sand uh, this was when we were returning from kazok to jispa and in that we had to engage the vehicle was uh, slipping a lot so we had to engage uh, 4x4 low sand mode and did not face any issues it, it we did it comfortably also on the same route we uh, we were driving on a terrain that was loaded with rocks uh small rocks although this is not a, a trail hawk version it does not get a rock mode but we did not face any issues there as well so yeah i mean it does inspire some confidence and i think that confidence is good when you are driving to these kind of terrains all right bahut sari achhi achhi baatein ho gayi hain thodi si burai bhi ki jaye hai na so let's talk about a few things that could have been better number 1 is the service network now when i took the test drive i had an awesome experience the customer service the level of information they provide the transparency they have um, the waiting period was less everything was just awesome but the problem that i faced is when i was driving to ladakh i had to get my first service done although i did a small inspection kind of a service here in bangalore but obviously that was a 7500 km trip so i had to get my vehicle service properly the major towns that we were hitting like nagpur bhopal uh, ghaziabad srinagar amritsar there were no service stations whatsoever the nearest service station that we could find was in indore uh, which is like 200 km from bhopal so on these kind of trips this the lack of service networks is pretty evident yeah i think a vehicle at this price point should have had the front parking sensors i think front parking sensors is definitely a miss it has a rear uh, rear parking sensors but uh, uh, but nothing in front when you are squeezing your car in tight spots it is very difficult to gauge the proximity now talking about 360 degree camera the downside of that is that it does not get a dedicated button now we didn't really had it as an issue 360 degree camera because it doesn't have a parking front sensor so we use 360 degree camera a lot however one of our friends recently got a mg hector and when we looked inside the cabin they had a dedicated button so that's when we realized are yaar ye to bahut hi useful hai because we use that feature a lot and navigating it through the u connect system is a little bit of pain small things in interior the glove box is not cooled uh the water bottle holder is not big enough when you are traveling long distances you do need like a liter or one one and a half liter water bottles you can't do that uh, max it can fit as like 500 or 700 ml water bottles um the ac is not very effective i've had passengers on a rear seat 
who have complained about the efficiency of the AC. Um, now what I do in that case is that turn the AC to the max and close the vents, close the front AC vents to like 40% or 50% so that more air goes in the back. But yeah, uh, it's, it's not very effective. So a car at this price point, um, in my opinion, should have assisted cruise control. Um, there are no ADAS features whatsoever in the car. It does get a cruise control, but it's not assisted. Uh, it doesn't have lane uh, driving modes. Although, I, I mean, I'm not technically a huge fan of ADAS systems, but I think basic ADAS could have helped like emergency braking and those kind of features are actually useful features. And again, um, I have never used those, so I can't really say that if I like or not. I mean, it is one of those things ki jab use karenge, then we'll get used to it. So I think this car at its price point should definitely should have definitely had some ADAS features, right? Uh, I think that's a big miss. That's pretty much it. Um, Again, these negative points are not something that you can't live with. Obviously, this car comes at a premium. So these are the kind of features you could expect, you should expect from a car. But they are, they are not kind of deal breakers, right? For me, I just love this car. Okay, so talking about accessories, since we were buying a 30 plus lakh car, I think it was very important for us to protect it. So I've got a PPF done on the whole car. Um, there was an option of ceramic versus PPF, but I chose PPF um, and I think it was a good choice. As you can see, we already scraped the front bumper at a toll booth in Pathan coat, I think. But yeah, the benefit of PPF is that they can simply remove this portion of PPF and attach a new one and your paint job is not damaged. I also had 3M window films installed on all six classes. On the front and back, we had a CR70 film, which allows 70% of light to go through. And on door windows, we had CR50, which allows 50% light transmission. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, these were our experience with Jeep Compass for the last six months for 12,000 kilometers. I think I've made a good investment. If you are looking for one, I would definitely recommend it. At this price point, there is not really much competition. Apart from this, the only car that comes close in terms of competition is the Hyundai Tucson. Um, when we were buying it, the car was already uh, in its sunset mode. Uh, there was a new variant that had been launched in global markets. It was not launched in India. And the only other car that we did consider was the XUV. However, the only downside was its waiting period. I cannot wait for a car for one year. That is way too much. But I did kind of like the overall package of Jeep um, in terms of drive, in terms of reliability, in terms of interior. So, so that's pretty much it. Um, that was our experience with G with the G for the last six months. And if you're looking for a 4x4, I think Jeep Compass is the best in Indian market right now. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a very happy Dashera and happy Diwali. And we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.